Okay, so if you are interested in this one, here's one that's resting on two pegs like this. Uniform rod XY has weight 20 newtons and length 90. Shh, shh, shh. Um, so the 20 newtons is gonna go right in the middle here. We're gonna have to be really careful about the distances. If the whole thing is 90, then I want it to be 45 for the middle. So that's 30. So then that will be 15 and that will be 25. And I'm gonna just ignore that 40, okay? So I've got it into all those separate pieces. Uh, the rod rests on two parallel pegs with X above Y in a vertical plane perpendicular to the axes of the pegs, blah, 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 blah. The rod makes an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal and touches the two pegs at P and Q where XP is 20 and XQ is 60. Basically, just exactly what it looks like on here. Um, this one is not resting on the floor, okay? Have you noticed it hasn't said anything about the floor here? So there is nothing going on down here. There's nothing going on. It just says, it's like this. It's just resting on two pegs this time. The friction is on the pegs because it doesn't say anything about the coefficient of friction between the rod and each peg is mu. So this one is going to be, uh, this one I'm gonna call, I might call it RP. I might actually just to save myself a bit of, I might call that one P and that one Q. Now, which way is it gonna to want to slide? So which way is the friction? Good. Mu P, Mu Q, Mu Q, and 20. Okay, so we need to figure out quite a lot of stuff that's going on in this kind of one. Calculate the normal components of the forces on the rod at P and Q. What do you think is going to be the best place to, thing to do for that first bit? Q. Unfortunately, one word answers aren't going to help. <laughs> We've got it. What are we going to do? I said, how are we going to find the normal components of P and Q? Oh, I'm sorry, Tadia. <laughs> yeah, okay, so where are we going to take moments from? If you take moments from Q, this is now like the beam questions that we used to do, apart from it's just tilted, okay? So we're gonna take moments about Q. If you wanted to, you could have taken moments about Y, but it's gonna get a bit messy. So I'm gonna start off by thinking about moments about Q. The good thing if I take moments about Q is there's a couple of forces I can ignore. Which forces can I ignore? Mu Q and Mu P, I can ignore the frictions. So from here, the easy one is P being multiplied by 40 centimeters. So it's 0.4 P. And that's going to be equal to this 20, which I need to think about over here. Now that angle is 30, and it's 15 is the hypotenuse, and it's running along the bottom. So it'll be 15 cos 30 multiplied by 20. Because it's all in centimeters and I've just converted it to meters, just because I, I feel it's safer to just do everything in the standard units. So you get 15 cos 30 times 20, divided by 0 0.4, and you get that P is 649.5190, which is 650 newtons. Okay, so it's not resting on the floor. Then all I need to do is I can either take moments about P, or I can start doing something. Actually, I probably am gonna take moments about P. If I take moments about P, I'm doing P, <laughs> I'm thinking of probability because of last lesson. If I take moments about P, I'm now gonna say, well, that can be ignored, that can be ignored. I've now got Q multiplied by 0 0.4 equals, I need to find the, the distance of this one. Now, if I extend that line, and I'm looking for this distance here, this angle is 30, and I'm looking for this distance, so it's 25 cos 30, yeah. Thank you. I've mixed meters and centimeters oh, together. So thank you very, very much for spotting that. So this is wrong. It should be equal to 0 0.15 cos 30 times 20. Did you work out what P is? Uh, yeah, it's uh, 6.4951. 6.4951, which is just 6.50 to three significant figures. Thank you for that. I was thinking, whoa, that's really, really high. <laughs> but then I didn't bother trying to decide with it. Okay, so we just said it's 0.4Q and the distance there was 25 or 0.25 cos 30 multiplied by 20. 
So Q is that divided by 0 0.4. So it's 0 0.25 times 20 times cos 30 divided by 0 0.4. And we get that Q is 10.825317, blah, 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 which is just 10.8 newtons to three significant figures. Okay, so we've done this bit, which is the eight marks. Um, this time we're being told that the coefficient of friction between the rod and each peg is mu, given that the rod is about to slip. When it says it's about to slip, it just means that friction has reached its maximum value. So there's a couple of different things we could do here. I probably would just want to do some resolving. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, that's, that's a really nice way you could have thought about doing this. If you now imagine tilting your brain, so this is the flat level, you could restrict the 20 into a force like this and a force like this. So that would have been 20 cos 30, shh, and 20 sin 30. I know some of you are doing your own work, but it's a bit noisy. Um, if you tilt your vision, you've then got P plus Q equals 20 cos 30. And now, actually, if we tilt our vision again, we can see that 20 sine 30 is equal to mu p plus mu q. So this is now like tilting our vision so that we're looking at that as the horizontal. We can now see that mu p plus mu q is equal to 20 sine 30. So mu is equal to 20 sine 30, which is just 10, divided by p plus q. So it becomes 10 divided by that plus, which is 0 0.5773, 0 0.58. I'm just going to do 58 for two significant figures for me. I don't know why. Just I sometimes think if I've rounded a lot, it's better to go for two significant figures. So should I just clarify what we did? And you, <laughs> the, the imaginary floor. Yeah, so re the thing with this whole question is actually, if I do this now, if I take the whole thing and I do this, can you, can you now see what the whole question is, okay? The question is like um, one that we used to do, where we were like, oh, I want to find moments at P, moments at Q. We resolved the 20 into that and that. Just literally tip your page and then start writing, like, writing across the page flat like that, OK? But it's a hard question, but they, they love to do things you've not seen before. Yeah, you got it? What were you going to ask? I took a I took a factor of me out from P plus Q. I kind of want to leave it like this. <laughs> It really like hammers the point that you can just like tilt the page, tilt the page. and in this case, no. And actually, you don't need to think about the triangle. Do you remember I said there was like a physics way of doing it? The physics way of doing it is tilting, but I actually sometimes think the distances on a complicated one are kind of a bit better to do. So this is a great example where it could have been done that way. If we weren't going to rotate it though, we still could have done a lot of resolving. It would have been resolving. This like this and this, 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 and it would have just been a lot more work, but it still would have worked technically. Okay. How is this work? 